How's it going YouTube? And up in front of the camera of another weird device. This one came from China. It is a, an electricity meter. I seen one on M Sylvan 59's channel, if I didn't get the pronunciation wrong. And it took about a month to get here. I ordered it in the beginning of March and it's March 28th today. So this is where it came from. And it took about a month to get to the United States, but I opened it up because I couldn't believe uh, $3 for an electricity meter. But I haven't like disassembled it, anything. But um, it's actually quite small. Here's the box. DDS844 is the model. And ISO 9001, I don't know if that's true. If that's a authentic certification. And Shanghai Huawei Instruments Instrumentation Limited was the company that made it. As you can hear, inside it has some rattly plastic. So let's open the box. And here's the device. And it's actually quite small. I'm surprised on how small this is. I will compare it to a European style electric meter. As you can see, it's very small and light. This one's like, I have to say, oh, a good at least five times as heavy as that. And compare it to a North American standard size. As you can see, very small. And it only cost $3, which is amazing. On the front here, here are the specs. Model number again. I believe that's the logo for the company. And the logo also down there. 220 volts, 10 to 40, 10 40 amps, so 40 amp meter, 50 hertz, and 1600 impulsions per kilowatt hour. And that's the company logo. I don't know if this is a genuine meter that's used in China, but this logo appears on every Chinese electric meter made. Um, it did say on the listing that it was uh, 50 to 60 hertz, 110 to 240 volts. On the bottom you have your terminals, very small. On the side you can see some sloppy molding. On the top you have a quality assurance sticker seal. I'll cut that. And it looks like they use string, like instead of a cable, they use like a string. And then on the back, there's like flexible, it's kind of like if you've ever eaten Chinese food in the takeout container, they give you that's kind of the material it's made out of. So, as you can hear, it has the rattling and a bit of a clunking going on. There's my screwdriver. So remove the terminal cover. As you can see, that looks like a straight up drywall screw. Actually, I should zoom in. But yeah, it looks like a drywall screw. Quite funny, but anyway, the terminal cover comes off. And your uh, schematic for wiring camera's not going to pick it up good, but it's uh, phase line, phase load, neutral line, neutral load. Let's cut this string. Once again, another drywall style screw. This is 
just even wants to come out. Yet another one. Pointy. Looks like they didn't um, bore out holes for the uh, plastic. They just used those screws. Here's the insides. I don't know if that's glass or plastic, but there's the front cover. On the inside, let me get a better view. Okay, so uh, you have a circuit board here, a nice uh, shunt resistor. It seems to be a common occurrence on Chinese-made uh, devices. And that seems to be a point, I don't know, is that a point two ohm? And then you have a, there's a link. And you continue with the disassembly. Of course this was only three dollars, which is very cheap. And I believe that that is the reason why it's been rattling. It looks like it's broken. And different style screws. So you see, that looks used almost. This device here looks almost used, kind of stained and gross, but anyway, this here comes out, and yeah, as you can see, definitely broken. So I'm going to go out yeah, on a limb and say, that does not work. Uh, soldering for the wires to the main board. And on the back... Yeah, for three dollars, I'm surprised that they included all these parts. Um, three capacitors, it looks like. I'm not too familiar with electronics, so sorry if I'm not getting any of these right, but it's like just a whole bunch of capacitors on the back of the board. A diode, ginormous resistor, right there. Uh, let me cut to uh, and see if I can repair this and then uh, see if it actually works. Okay, so about after working with this thing for about uh, 45 minutes, I was able to get this gear assembly back together. And after fidgeting with it and examining the quality of these parts, I, I am completely out of words. Um, if you notice some sun fading here and then this crappy label, and I kept peering around the circuit board and I was surprised by the quality of parts that were put on this uh, on the back of this board. I have this uh, secured down. Um, I don't want to take it off because this keeps popping off and all the little tiny gears come out of it. But um, you can see a huge uh, capacitor there. There we go. Uh, another big capacitor there, there, and there. And then I kept poking around, and I noticed, you're not going to be able to see this, but... Uh, maybe you will. Look at that. It's like they cut this circuit board out of another meter. And I was reading, and it says DDS... Oh, it's, of course it's out of focus. DDS256. So this meter was it looks like they scrapped one of these at another meter took the salvageable parts out of it and put them in these um, tiny little pieces which is completely shocking and for three dollars the components that on the back of the board here I have a um, itron meter that was uh, taken for parts as you can see it's the same parts on the inside a huge uh, capacitor there and then one down there but these meters here cost at least $60, starting at $60 manufacturing price. So that's surprising that they uh, just put kind of scrap parts in here. But let me put this back together and we shall power it on. 
Okay, I've taken the front plate out. As you can see, DDS 844, so it's a different chip in this meter. Um, I just want to see how it operates without a front cover, just to see what's actually going on inside. And since it's rated for 40 amps, unfortunately I don't know if I'll be able to blow it up. But, let's see if it'll take at least 20 amps. Wire this up to a space heater. So phase, well I don't even need to look at the schematic because there's no face plate on this meter. I assume there's no ground, so I should just tuck those out of the way. Now I'm quite worried about what's going to happen when this gets plugged in. Let me plug it in and see what happens. Hopefully there's no flames. Not nothing exciting. It is impulsing, um, this is on 120 volts, 60 hertz. You know, I don't know if that's constant. It doesn't look, uh, like it's constantly advancing. It looks like it's intermediate. It's making like a kind of like a punching sound when it, uh, like you know those old uh, timestamp cards where you put your card in. It's kind of making that sound when it advances. I don't even know if it is advancing or not. But I'm gonna let that sit there for a while, and um, I'll come back. Okay, and as you can see, it did advance a little bit. Um, I am not at all sure about the accuracy of this thing because it, it's a different circuit board than for what that, I don't know if that's even going to be, they're even operating in sync with each other. And as I was standing over it, I don't know if that's going to, the camera's going to pick it up. Yeah, I just had it in frame. As you can see, it says, uh, it's not going to be able to be picked up well, but it says SKD uh, power meter. So it's like they've literally taken parts from an old, probably 
1990s electricity meter and then slap them in this plastic housing and then called it a day. That's literally, I don't know, that's just amazing. But I do not at all think that this, I would not at all want this on the side of my house or anywhere even near my house. So I just think that this is just kind of one of those ways Chinese are trying to recycle, but I mean, recycling's other ways to it, but yeah, this here is just another surprising thing from China. Well, that's it for this video. Catch you in the next one.